Good morning. This is uh, April the uh, May, excuse me, <laughs> May the sixteenth. This is Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, and this is called the Reach Out Ministry. We're going to have our communion today, and uh, that's something that that we need to do on occasion. I know some churches practice doing it every week, but to me, that would become more of a tradition than what it truly represents. Doing it on occasion, we really do reflect back on what it all intended to mean. If you have your Bibles, look with me in Luke in chapter 22. And we're going to start in verse 14. Before we read 14, though, I'm going to back up just a little and tell you what's going on. Uh, Jesus was ready to do the Lord's Supper with his disciples. And he said, go ye into the town. And if you find a man carrying a water pot, uh, follow him to his residence and ask him uh, where the upper chamber was so they could take of the Lord's Supper. And they did just as he said. They went in town, found a man with a water pot. Carried, they followed him home and they told him what they wanted to use his uh, upper chamber for, and he was in total agreement with that. And then it says in verse 14, and when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And he knew what he was fixing to suffer. Death on the cross for you and I. And he says, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. So he says, You know, I'm not going to eat any more uh, thereof until we get into the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he says, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of the God shall come. Now, I know some churches practice using grape juice and some wine, but he never called it wine here. He called it the fruit of the vine. And then in the verse 19, and he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it unto them and said, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after the supper, saying, The cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So he let us know there that he shed his blood for us, that he, we might have remissions of our sins. And now let's go over into Hebrews in chapter 9. And we're going to start in verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves, which are better sacrifices than these. Now we know in the Old Testament, before Jesus died on the cross, every year they had to offer a sacrifice to roll their sins forward. However, the blood of a goat or a sheep or even a turtle dove, that blood could never sanctify them. It just helped roll their sins forward for another year. And every year that they would have to make this sacrifice, uh, they would it would call them to remember what sins they had done in their past. And, you know, we're not to really dwell upon the sins. I do, though. I sometimes think of the sins I've done in the past, and I think about it periodically. But we're not to dwell on that. We're to dwell on that God forgave us of all of our sins. 
that we might inherit the kingdom of God. And he remembers our sins no more, he says, from the east is to the west. And that's a pretty first stretch. <laughs> but he doesn't, he doesn't bring up our sins ever again. He forgives us. Then in verse 24, it says, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in the heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. He's at the right hand throne of God, making intercession for you. Everything that we, every prayer we pray and everything that we do, uh, God is now at the hand of, at the right hand of God and in the presence of God for us. Isn't that a wonderful statement? It sure is, in my opinion. If you have your Bibles now, turn with me over into 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're, we're going to start in verse uh, 20. When you come together, therefore, in one place, is not this to eat of the Lord's Supper? You're gathering together to have the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every man taketh before the other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. Already had it. Didn't leave anything for others that came. He says, what? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them who have not? What shall I say unto you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. It wasn't the coming together to eat of the unleavened bread and, and let it just eat and eat and eat till you get full. This is to do in remembrance of the body of Jesus Christ and of the blood that he shed for our sins. In verse uh, 23, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He had the Lord's Supper and before the night was over. We know Judas, his, his carrot, went to the soldiers and told them, whichever one I kiss, that's the one you need to apprehend. And he went and he brought the soldiers with him and he kissed Jesus on the cheek to show them this is the man you need to take into custody. And we know how that ended. They gave him 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus. And when he went back and he tried to give it back, they wouldn't take it. They said, this is blood money. You know, you, you showed us who to kill and we don't want your blood money. So he ended up throwing it on the floor and leaving. And they took that 30 pieces of silver and they bought what they called the potter's field to bury people in. But he says in verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body, which was broken for you and do it in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, which he had supped saying, this cup is a new testament unto my blood. This do ye, as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. So when we have the Lord's Supper, we are to examine ourselves and to know that we have no ought against each other. And the body, the bread represents his body. The fruit of the vine represents his blood. He says uh, in verse 26, for as oft as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, do you show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. He says, let no, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup, 
For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily shall eateth and drink the damnation to himself, which not discerning the Lord's body. We are to examine ourselves. If there's something in our heart, malice or hatred or whatever, if we have that in our heart today, God's telling us it's better not to take it at all. Wait till you get that matter resolved and you hate no more or you despise no more or you have aught against any brother or sister in Christ. And if you have that feeling in your heart today, don't take it. But if you have a clear conscience toward God and a clear conscience to all humanity, then you can partake of it. That's a strong, strong warning of what we're doing and how sincere it is. It represents the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. And surely if he has no aught against anybody, which God doesn't, he loves everyone. He wants everyone to know Christ as their Savior. Not all people do. But he says it is not his will that any should perish. In God's eyes, he wished everyone would believe upon his son and be saved. He says, for he that eateth and drink unworthily shall eat and drink damnation to himself and not discerning the Lord's body. I read that again because I think that it is very important that we understand what communion really represents. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. They don't really realize the importance of what we are fixing to do in the name of the Lord. If you will now turn with me over into Luke, I mean uh, Matthew, excuse me, uh, Matthew 26. And we're going to be reading 26 through 30. And if the ones that are going to distribute the uh, bread and the wine, if you'll come forward, please. If you will, pass it out, but don't drink it or eat of it right away. Matthew 26, starting in 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it unto his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for you giving your body that we might have everlasting life, that you have taken away our sins that truly believe upon you. And in God's name, we thank you for that. Amen. Now you can eat of the bread. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them and said, drink ye all of it. So let's give thanks for the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that the fruit of the vine represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which he freely gave that we might have everlasting life. He gave his body. He gave his blood. But on the third day, most importantly of all, he arose and he now sits at the right hand throne of God to answer our prayers, to watch over us to lead, guide, and direct us. And we thank you for that. Jesus, in your name, we thank you. Amen. Now you can drink of the fruit of the vine. After he told him to drink it, he went on to say, for this is my blood, of the New Testament, which I shed for many 
for the remission of sin or the forgiveness of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. We all participate that have believed in Christ today, and we have no odd against anyone. We've just participated in representing his blood and of his body that he gave for us. But I want us to think of this. He said he would not drink it again until he do it with you and the Father's kingdom. There's going to be a Lord's Supper when we get to the Lord's kingdom. And that will be the greatest <laughs> communion that we've ever had in our entire life to think that we would get to have communion with our Lord and our Savior these many, many hundreds and even thousands of years after it was first done. Our Lord has reserved for us to have communion with him in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that promise you've given us.